Hiya folks, welcome back. Last week I showed you a quick time lapse of these random contemporary built in alcove units and as promised today I'm going to talk you through the build. As is usual for any project like this, the customer had an idea of what they wanted. I put together a design on SketchUp and they signed off on it before I started any work. First part of the build is the lower cabinets. They're just really straightforward cabinets with push to open doors. I used adjustable feet to get everything to the correct height and level. They're then held against the back wall using space plugs, which I've talked about before. They're awesome. I'll leave a link in the description. They're then just trimmed up with 18mm MDF all the way around and scribed to the walls and around the skirting. And I've cut those perfectly flush to the top surface. So once it's painted, you can't see any transition between the edge grain and the face grain of, of the top. Nice and simple, especially since the customer didn't want the lower units protruding past the fireplace. Then the upper units, the tricky bit. You can essentially view the upper units as three floating shelves. These then have dividers mostly held in place with dados that support an array of other smaller floating shelves. There's then a couple of final dividers to break up some of the larger sections. I had to build these in a very specific order and I'll talk about that in a minute. I also had to bear in mind that both alcoves are different sizes so it's not as simple as just making everything twice. And since the back wall is far from level, every back piece had to be scribed to the wall. For the proportions to look correct, I wanted all of the shelf thicknesses to be 36 millimeters. So the best approach I could think of was to make everything from a sandwich of three layers of 12 mil MDF. So a 12mm board on the top and bottom and 12mm strips running through the middle. Once the glue has dried on this sort of sandwich construction, they're incredibly rigid. The reason I didn't go for two 18mm boards glued together was partly to reduce the overall weight of everything, but it also allowed me to make the dados by simply missing out section of boards. I don't know what the official name is for these sort of dados, but I call them false dados. Using this method also allowed me to inset the support strip on the back edge so that I've only got 24mm of material to scribe away rather than 36mm of material. So it just makes the scribing a little bit easier. I'm using 18mm MDF on the sides to act as the main supports for everything. The sides at the bottom are glued and screwed into the wall since these are going to take most of the weight of everything above and then the rest of the sides are just glued in place. This picture here speaks a thousand words. You can see the false dados here and here. I've deliberately not put a dado here since I wanted some flexibility to allow for any corrections to keep everything level. You'll see I'm using some three mil spaces here and one mil spaces here at the top just to true everything up. So this section here is just glued and screwed in place. These pieces you can see are just temporary supports to hold everything in place during a dry fit. And you can also see the overhang of this dividing piece that hasn't been scribed to the back wall yet. So the big question everyone wanted to know the answer to, why didn't I paint the back wall before starting the install? Well, that was the original plan, but the customer hadn't decided what colour they wanted the back wall to be, and that's why you'll see I've painted a little sample patch onto the right hand wall. I had to crack on with the install, so the painting of the back wall unfortunately just had to wait until the customer had confirmed that they were happy with the final colour. What I didn't want to do was paint the wall only for them to change their minds. And my original plan with the painting of the actual shelves was to prime them and at least get a top coat on in the workshop. But sadly, I just simply ran out of time. I'd been up against it with a couple of other jobs and I didn't want to change the install date for the customer. So the mammoth painting job just had to wait until after the install. To put a positive slant on this, I would have really struggled with drying space anyway in my little workshop, so I just had to chill out with the podcasts on for the two full days it took to paint everything. Another question that came up was the edging of the MDF units. I've used a 12mm capping piece on everything to cover up the edges. This also matches in with the framing on both sides and it makes it look more like a complete built-in unit as opposed to just a bunch of shelves. 
I'm not a big fan of edge banding and this gives a very clean overall finish. In terms of the paint I used, it was my usual Leyland acrylic primer undercoat and then two coats of Dulux satin wood for the top coat. All water based and it gives a lovely hard wearing finish. In terms of what I would do differently if I was doing this particular job again, the scribing took forever. Unfortunately, if I was to build the upper units as a complete unit, they would have just been too big and heavy for me to even pick up. So I think what I probably could have done is separated it into two or maybe even three pre-built units that are then just put into place and those would all have backs on and then I wouldn't have to scribe everything to the back wall and I could have then done most of the finishing in the workshop. Yes, I would have had to make a couple of journeys to get everything over to the customer site because I wouldn't fit it all in my truck, but that probably would have been quicker than all of the scribing that I had to do. That said, I still would have run into the problem of the units being different sizes. If I had done pre-built units, I might have run into other unforeseen problems. I'll be doing a job pricing video over on my Patreon at some point, so if you want to know more about the costs involved in a project like this and what I charge the customer, get yourself over there and I'll go through the job pricing in a bit more detail when I get a chance. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and I shall see you next time.